Hello, and welcome back to the Changing Earth podcast. A little bit of a, a, a delayed intro there as I fumbled with my Skype in the way. But. Because we were chatting up too much before the show. I know. I was like, oh, 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 it's time to go oh, live. It's time yeah, to go. All of a sudden, Sarah went quiet on me. <laughs> all right. This is episode number 339. Hey, Chin, what's up? Hey, Chin's up. Oh man, we've been we've been having some busy days. So uh, yeah, I know you're just working your little tail off over there. So thanks for for lending some of your time yeah. this evening to us to be here. This is a rest. This is like the best part of my day, <laughs> right? You get to just chill, have a nice conversation. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. So changing Earth uh, today, obviously. Um, Russia invaded Ukraine, so everybody's talking about that. I've been trying to. Uh, limit my news exposure to uh, you know because it's like a dang tv show on the news it seems like when it's serious stuff and uh it's just frustrating frustrating the way they they make a show out of everything um just so to fill you up with smoke and mirrors so you really don't know what's happening in the background and reality so tv is reality tv now right that's what it, I, it yeah. just kind of sickens yeah. me, honestly. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's legit and um, it's really affecting people's lives. And I don't know. It just seems like it's a big, big show. But um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. But before we get started, we have been throwing it back and forth. What book we <laughs> want to talk about and, and where we want to go with that. Um, so we've chosen to do Little House in the I, Big Woods. And I want to hear no crap from the guys in the audience. Yeah. I'm reading a book. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know it's like Little House in the Big Woods. So if you're older, you know the book and maybe you haven't read it because you're like, oh, my gosh, it's it's Little House on the Prairie stuff. And that's lame. Or if you're younger, you might not have heard it at all. But um, these books are just full of survival information and food storage information and how to survive without everything we have now it's like uh it's kind of it's, sitting down and listening to grandma about how they used to live it's right? literally like prepper fiction before prepper fiction was a category exactly because that's what it feels like it, it so is and, yeah and personally i love to learn as i read those are the books i'm going to gravitate towards and uh these are great great books so uh, a couple of ways you can get a hold of the book and follow along with us. Um, there's actually some free stuff online, but be wary because it is still copyrighted material, even though it was published so long ago. Um, the copyright is still active in the United States. So I say watch out for free downloads because they might be targeted towards other countries or stuff. You just never know what you're going to get there. So personally, I just bought the ebook, but um, Chin has a cool uh little program that we don't mind talking about even though i kind of took the sail wind out of your sails on oh, it a little man. bit you told me you don't get any royalties or anything yeah i thought it was at least at least the author was good at some kind of stuff so anyway it's called hoopla h-o-o-p-l-a it's an app it works on a computer too and it hooks up with your uh, libraries system and so i had a library card to my local library I use a membership number to uh, log into the Hoopla and mm -hmm. set up an account. And then I just go, I could borrow books just like I would at the library. So cool. when Sarah was, yeah, Sarah was talking about uh, Will House of the Prairie. So I typed that in a search. It came up and it actually had the audio book. So I downloaded it. I get to keep it or, you know, use it for uh, 27 days. Well, and just like a library, at, right? At 27 days. Then, Turn it back oof, in. It, it's can you just yeah, rent it again third. after that? Yeah, yeah. Because we'll be yeah, talking about it. Or if I get done while. with it early, I can return it early, you know. <laughs> right. Because right. they usually they only have uh, like three copies or something, is what I've kind of felt like they had. So, um, like it, you can get on a waiting list just like the library, and they'll okay. send you an email when it's available to, to rent again. You could do a favorites list. So, like, as you're going through the searching through stuff, you could just put a little ding on there so you know you, you can just go back to a list. Works great. I've had it for years now, uh, probably 
Yeah, a long time. Nice. Five, six years. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. I'll yeah. Check it out. Like I said, the library is great. Right and for like road trips and stuff, we download audiobooks yes. and listen to them all the time. Because uh -huh. we used to use um, Audible. Yeah. yeah. But the membership got so expensive. Mm -hmm. I just, I was like, no, nah, we got to save some money somewhere. So um, this worked great. This And I mean, there's all kinds of libraries that, um, school libraries and stuff that yeah my audiobooks are audible exclusive unless yeah. you're a changing our series member and then and, uh yeah you can go you to the got it going kind of, on yeah um and i do a book of the month there so um, i actually have to change up the book that's there note to self yeah <laughs> um but yeah people. so we're doing little house in the big woods the little house on the prairie series is actually a five book series and uh we're doing little house in the big woods first and in this chapter it's just kind of the introduction obviously you know you find out who laura is she's living in a log cabin amongst the trees there's no other houses or people or roads she's never seen a town right She's never seen more than two houses together yeah and you know what what really was like made me really this was like a hundred years ago this is how different our world is just yeah. a century later it's, it's so interesting to me right you grow it up your family that's all you've ever known was your three yeah. sisters yeah those people like that's it that's it it's crazy and I get wolves. well. I guess they have relatives come visit. Yeah, yeah. So like cousins and right. They have family. But... The grandparents are near. But yeah. you know, like dad goes into town, but it's a it's an ordeal, and and they so far and he's gone of... for like a while, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so There's they have the uh, stories too with him traveling into town. They have the dog too. Jack's a big part of her life there. Yep, the, the brindle bulldog. Yep, so, and you know. I'm dealing with that puppy still. <laughs> puppy <laughs> training, puppy training. You got to put yeah. the time in at the beginning. Yeah, to get the dog. Mm -hmm. get the dog. So um, she talks about how dad would go out and harvest deer in the fall because they were nice and fat. If you mm -hmm. if you harvest them in the winter time, they're just not as as fat as they are yep. in the fall. You know, you get more meat that way, which totally makes sense. Um. And then they would hang it up in the tree so that the wolves couldn't get it. Yep. I was thinking about the bear, though. Bears can climb, man. So yep. that would still be. But you could shoot the bear. Now you got more meat. Oh, he did? Well, he didn't. Well, she the... at the bear, yeah. <laughs> um, their meat would all be salted and then packed. And yep. I've done shows on how to make this happen in the past. So there's a. So obviously I've been interested in these books for a while. So I've taken some of the concepts from them before. And so you can look for that, how to preserve meat um, podcast. Also, um, the skins were salted and stretched to make leather. Yep. Great way to do it. Um, I've actually done that before as well. And then they were making like buck skin. So we have chemicals now we can treat the leather with. But um, it, it's really an ordeal to to learn to do that skill it's um fun i would suggest yeah, anybody was, who hasn't do, done it try it it. Was, it was like the circle of life because he made the uh the pouch that held his bullets yep out of deer skin right yep. so it was like right yeah and then he used that to go hunt deer so it's kind of like a circle there making use of everything yeah yeah um, and then just like how the meats were all stripped and salted. So they mm -hmm. soaked in the, while well, they, you know, laid out in the salt for a while. Mm -hmm. And then he made the cool log smoker. Yeah. Yeah. From the hollow tree. So that was a great idea. I was like, how, how ingenious is that? Um, I've done it a blog on from that from having too. to like build it. Yeah. You have, the... you have to just hollow it out. Uh, yeah. You put a door in the bottom. You put a little roof on top. Yeah. And then, and then all the put, nails. He put nails where he could reach up from the door. And he put nails where he could reach down from with a ladder out from the top. And yeah, such a such an incredible idea. Nowadays, we're like, simple. Hmm, how could I make right? a smoker? Yeah. Um, yeah the no, one nowadays, it's like, how do we preserve anything unless it's uh, frozen in the freezer? Exactly. You know? Exactly. Even canning's, you know, people are trying to get back into that, but that's. But that's canning requires lost. jars. It requires lids. Yeah. It requires, mm -hmm. um, you know, for meat, you got to have a pressure canner. What happens when the seal on your pressure canner goes? Yeah. 
You're going to have to have other ways. So my biggest takeaway was salt. Yeah, salt. How right. important is the salt, you know, at that Lots. point? Yeah. I mean, even if uh, things went down, you emptied out your whole freezer. Now you need enough salt to preserve all that stuff. Um, and you need to know how to do it, too. So this is a great, um, easy little way to do it. I was telling Chim before the show, whenever I think of a smoker, you think of like the fire being in one place and then it feeds the smoke into the smoker. But he put the fire right inside of the tree trunk and then used fresh green chips to smoke them because that way it smolders. sits on the fire. Yeah, it smolders more. Exactly. Yeah. And they would feed it for days. You know, it's a yep. long process. And then each piece the is wrapped in to... paper. The girls had to maintain the fire while Dad was out in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. And the paper, too. I'm like, where's all this paper coming from? So, you know, Dad must have brought that back from the when you went from into town. town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just rolls of it. Mm -hmm. So that's something else to think about. Like, we wouldn't have paper for wrapping things up, really, unless you're going to rip your books apart, you know? Um, Or, like, if you give... I don't know if copy paper would work. You know, you need, like, the butcher paper, I'm thinking, right? Yeah. So um, that's something else to just kind of think about. Um, the fish being salted and stored in barrels. I mean, how often mm -hmm. do we think of like eating salted fish anymore? It just. The other thing I took away from this was they were always doing something. Right. You know, he was either working, you know, in the forest to get logs or wood or hunting or fish like he go off for a day and come back with a load of fish or yep I mean, it wasn't just like sitting around having a vacation yeah playing some video they games were working all the time yeah because mm -hmm. he, he had to put up the food to make it through the winter yes yeah i mean that's that's what why i always caution like when we go if we go into a survival situation yeah. where it's like a long-term supply shortages and whatnot how different, I mean, how drastically different our lives would have to be pretty yeah. instantly, you know? And the other thing is that I thought about, so so the day, the man of the house is off in the woods, like, constantly, like, almost every day, right? Mm -hmm. He's almost every day off in the woods. So the girls and mom better know how to take care of themselves because stuff stuff yeah. happened. That's why um, they can't like call anybody. There's no neighbors. They're, the the father's the, off. That's and why so Carol Ingalls, like when I did my top ten survival stars, yeah. she made my list of top ten because yeah. that woman was like hardy. You she had the bear. She had one experience <laughs> where like she was cut all bad and everything, like yeah. fevering. She was all by herself and had to like. Yep take cauterize it and like survive till he got back home it was in, it was an insane yeah. story i was like yeah. after the first couple of stories that did going off into the woods i'm like man these women got to be tough yeah yeah and they didn't really shoot and stuff back then so so the pig it was allowed to roam free in the woods until yeah fall. that blew my mind yeah and the, then they, they would could catch actually it. call them back yeah <laughs> and pet the pig's like okay you know <laughs> Yeah. So, and then they, the garden too. The, Cause I was always like, how did people grow gardens before we could buy like all this fencing to put around it? Like keep the yeah. deer away, right? Jack. Mm hmm. Jack, the dog. <laughs> yep. The girl said that they wake up in the morning and see fresh, fresh deer tracks, but then they'd see fresh Jack tracks. <laughs> <laughs> and the Jack had control Jack of would it. Chase them out of the, the vegetable garden. Um, so the root vegetables, the potatoes, carrots, beets, turnips, cabbages, things like that mm -hmm. were all stored in a cellar. We've yep. actually done that many times, been able yeah. to store up our root vegetables and last through like most of the winter um, when we have cool. really good producing gardens. So definitely still doable. Don't need a big space to make it happen, honestly. Uh -huh. um, braiding the onions together by their tops is the most spectacular. I picked it up from this book. Um, we had piled them together one year, and it's the worst for onions. It just turns into, like, this mash of rotted onion that you have to clean out of whatever yeah. you put it in. That's so disgusting. Yeah. But when you braid them together that way, they have the greens to help keep them fresh, and it just keeps them all organized. So if you do have, like, really? one or two that rot on the way, it doesn't affect every single one of them. So that really does work. 
Um, the pumpkins and squashes, those stay good for a long time. You don't really yeah. have to worry about, you know. Um, we had bought pumpkins for canning, and I didn't can them, and they almost lasted a whole year in the garage. Wow. Yeah. Where? In the garage. Like, huh. it was midsummer by That's the time they were believe, like. hard to believe, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and it gets hot here in the summer. You know, yeah. So it was like midsummer by the time I was like, "Oh, those pumpkins, we gotta get rid of." You know, <laughs> kind of squishy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess because the, the jack o' lanterns, it's because you carve them up because they go bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. once you cut them, if they get, yeah, you know, if they get marred or anything, but if mm -hmm. you just store them whole, your pumpkins, your squash will last a long time. Hmm. Um, that's why they're winter. Um, why they call yeah, them yeah. winter vegetables or whatever. Uh, the fish was stored in the pantry along with cheeses and stuff like that on the shelves. Your cheeses, if it has like the that. head cheese. Yeah. Yeah. I always got <laughs> thrown off by that head cheese. Um, mm. And it's not really cheese. It's just. No, it's not. No. It's. Um, Brain food. <laughs> boiled. The, so you take the head of the pig. You boil it yeah. until all the meat falls off. Yeah. Then she chopped up the meat and seasoned it with pepper, salt, and spices. Mixed it all in a pot with some, uh, or mixed it all with pot Sage. liquor. Yeah, and set that to cool. And yeah. then that's what they ate. Yeah. The sausage was awesome, too. That She just took, yeah. like, all the leftovers and chopped it all up and mixed it with spices. And then they'd roll it into big balls and just leave that out in the shed to I'm freeze for you, the winter. There is nothing better than fresh sausage. Right? I, oh, I, I know. It's so true. i spoiled by having, like, fresh sausage. Mm -hmm. mm. It is true. So good. So Fry good. some of that up. Love mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah, the pork sausage is so yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you can mix yeah. it with some venison sausage, oh, go, mm -hmm. good day. Okay, the hams and the shoulders, they were put in a pickle um, to brine. So they were actually, mm -hmm. you know, more pickled off the bat. And then um, they were salted first and then brined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, I've always been curious about that. Like, how do you get those big hunks of meat? Like, yeah, you're going to smoke them and everything. You're going to have to keep them in the smoker a lot longer. But, like, how do those big hunks of meat stay good all winter? And I'm going to say it's a lot due to that pickling solution. And then the bladder, dad takes the bladder, <laughs> he blows it up, and now the kids have a balloon to play with. Like, so, so I'm listening along, and they're like, and dad saved the bladder and the pigtail for, for, the, for Laura and Mary. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're going to eat the bladder? It's just like a membrane kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, you thing. can use them as a water pouch, too. Yeah, uh -huh. but but uh, no, they were using it as a toy, basically. It's right, like made a ball out, and of it like bounces around. I thought around that was so funny. Like, I was like, "Oh, thank God they're not eating it." But yeah, it carries air and everything. Like, yeah. that's just insane. Yeah, my balloon was like a bladder when we were, you know, <laughs> how far have we come? How far will we come yeah, away right? from that kind of stuff? Yeah, exactly. Um, the tail they actually like toasted. It was like a treat. They would fry yeah. it, and fry it, and then eat it and give the the girls. Yeah, yeah, the girls they put put it on a stick, and the girls took turns like roasting it. I don't know. I know what comes out right below that tail. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. yeah, but it's inside the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, um, fair enough. And then they took the 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 spine, basically that part of the spine, the tail. Mm -hmm. They gave it to the dog. Yeah, so they use like everything and that's the other thing like what are you feeding your dogs in a long-term survival yeah. situation luckily both my dogs like to eat a lot of bugs you know <laughs> so, oh, i know my dog my dog eats fried worms yeah she like, eats fried earthworms like there's no, to no like, tomorrow stop it. Night. i know i told Rhonda we have to start a earthworm farm just to feed the dog if <laughs> things yeah, go to hell but it's it's Chili legit fire. like i don't want to just have to like kill my dogs or something like that that'd be horrible you know so yeah. um if they can hunt if they can feed themselves that that kind of thing well, my dog will not have any problems right um let's see and then the lard so obviously the lard, yeah, the lard. was just mm -hmm. savored and used mm -hmm. and um mama would take the lard and temper it you know so you have to cook it so it doesn't burn but you can yeah. get all those yucky pieces out that's going to make it go bad faster yeah. and talking with um nicole appellian i was like you know most of the recipes for any kind of salves and stuff that we use have olive oil in it like, mm -hmm. what do we do? How do we make olive oil in a survival situation? She's like, you don't. And I'm like, well, what do we use? You use the lard. 
That's mm. what they would use for everything. Um, you can use it as waterproofing on your clothes, stuff like that. Uh, so um, it was very, very important stuff. Also, use on it the- for uh, cook and bacon, right? Uh, for um, I mean, like baking. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yep. Pie, pie yep. Um, crust and stuff. Um, and then on that show, Colony, they also used it to make biofuel. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty interesting as well. I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. And then we talked about the sausage. So that oh, man. that takes us mm. through. I know I'm hungry now. So we should <laughs> be doing this right before dinner. <laughs> so that takes us through chapter one of Little House in the Big Woods. Guys, get the book and follow along. We're going to have some fun ripping it apart. And I know it's like Little House in the Big Woods. But I guarantee you're going to learn. From this book, so I wouldn't. Steer okay, you I was, yeah, I was telling Sarah, it's kind of like li- listen to a little girl tell about her day, right? That's basically what you're mm-hmm. doing, right? So the um, the action of the story isn't all that much, except for what Dad tells his little stories. To yeah, get the girls to you know, make a point with the girls, but um, the subject matter is outstanding. Right. Yeah, you're gonna learn. Yeah, you're gonna for learn. sure. So um, talking about the war uh, with Ukraine and talking about how they used to store their food, potential upcoming food shortages is where my brain always goes to. We've talked a lot Mm. uh, recently about, you know, crops that are getting devastated in Brazil and Argentina, um, things like that. So my brain automatically went to, you know, how is this going to further affect the supply chain? How is this going to further affect agricultural prices? Things like that. So um, I found out that during World War II, there was com- there was things like car uh, t- cars, tires, bicycles, stoves, rubber footwear, shoes, and typewriters um, were, were rationed, actually, during World War II. <laughs> and it's because we were just starting to produce synthetic rubber at that point. Rubber came from rubber trees before we had synthetic rubber. So with the rubber shortages, that's why they started limiting those things. And then factories that made cars and bicycles and typewriters, things like that, were now We're being used for the war. war. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. The war effort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the war effort. So then um, things like gasoline was obviously rationed, fuel, mm-hmm. oil, and kerosene. Mm-hmm. So these are like heating um, mm-hmm. oils. And solid fuels were also rationed. So this is this plays into what we're looking at for this event as well. And then the food products that were rationed were sugar, coffee, processed foods. And uh, the processed foods, again, because the canning companies were shipping for the war, right? So you couldn't right. get, like, canned goods in the store anymore. Um, meats canned fish, cheese, canned milk, and fats. And that's because they need those calories, right? So they were shipping a lot of the high-fat foods and whatnot over to the soldiers. So that's what we kind of looked like there. And so I wanted to look at, for the last two years, 2019, 2020, or no, 2020, 2021, we saw less food production coming in overall, right? So... Yeah. It's kind of a good idea to like get the beat of what's going on food commodity wise before we start applying what could happen because of this potential war. So for the most part, honestly, things look pretty stable. Like wheat supplies, um, they expected smaller supplies, reduced domestic use, lower exports, and higher ending stocks for the USA. Uh, Production in Argentina and Uruguay went up, but it was offset by decreases in Brazil and Paraguay. Russia's beginning stocks were lower, and their exports were expected to reduce even further. And then um, for the end of the year, they were forecasting like increased stock for the USA, Russia, Kazakhstan. I don't know why they came in. They must be like good producers in Argentina. But global stocks were still forecasted at the lowest level since 2016 and 17. So even though they're kind of like holding things stable, we really haven't rebounded since the really Mm -hmm. hard floods in 2019, right? Um, 
We've been talking about it for so many years now. It just seems like, uh, <laughs> when did it really go bad? And it was way before COVID. Um, coarse grains, the USA, we had some higher production, um, but they're expecting lower exports uh, going out, lower ending stocks of that. The foreign outlook, they were also producing less. And um, it was kind of holding stable, the market. It was uh, consumption was pretty stable because we've had a decline in production in Brazil, Argentina, Kenya, Mexico, the EU, and Paraguay with larger yields in Ukraine. So Ukraine's been really stepping up their corn production and bolstering some of the shortages that were happening. Now, remember, this is all pre anything happening with Ukraine. This is what the f global forecast was before any of this started, right? I heard... I saw one of those little post-its. I forget the source. But it was... Um, the Ukraine was 30% of the world's uh, wheat? Yes. Like, holy yeah. crow. Uh-huh. Ukraine and Russia. We'll get there. Because then I started researching, like, okay, yeah. how is that specifically going to affect us? So that's your wheat, your coarse grains, you know, rice. They were expecting smaller supplies again. Lower mm -hmm. domestic use, decreased exports, reduced ending stocks. So globally, there's been smaller supplies. There's been reduced consumption because of these smaller supplies. And um, oil seeds, like your soybean oil, your canola, your sunflower oil, peanut crops, things like that, were lower production or were higher production, but there was a lower cottonseed production. So it's really kind of offsetting itself. And then globally, these lower productions made for just, you know, we had reduced crops from Brazil, reduced crops from Argentina, and reduced crops from Paraguay. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on that. USA did pretty good this last year with the soybean harvest. But, mm -hmm. you know, we can't, like, suck it up for everybody. And then sugar, because sugar was one of the rationing things on the list, um, production in the U.S. has been increased um, big time, actually, in Louisiana. So they're thinking that we'll have to import less because we're picking it up um, with producing our own and getting the sugar from beets as well. So that's kind you of... Would think, you would only wish that uh, sugar wasn't so much in use. Right? Yeah, Everybody's no. health would be so much better. Um, as far as coffee goes, we know what the outlook like that on it. You know, Brazil got hit really hard already. Um, so we kind of already understood that coffee is going to go up. And this will probably just make it even worse. Um, yeah, we got the inside track with disaster coffee. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what's what's the prices looking like over there, Intrepid Commander? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. So livestock, poultry, and dairy. So red meat and poultry production increased. Beef production estimates increased. There was higher, there was bigger carcass weights coming in. Because people were holding off butchering during the pandemic, right? Um, because there wasn't as many workers to work the factories. Yeah, the, the butcher. Yeah, mm -hmm. the butcher. It's hard to get butchers. So people were holding their beef longer. So that made for biggest mm -hmm. carcass, bigger carcass weights coming in. That's that's good news as far as the prices go. Pork production's been reduced. It was just the slow slaughter rates in 2021 really took a toll on the pork production. Uh -huh. So I'm getting up. I told Brock, I'm like, we're getting a pig <laughs> like right now. <laughs> and then egg production is also down. Same kind of reasons. They didn't have as much people to work the factories and whatnot. So good time to get your chickens going if you've been putting it off um, and you can do that. Mm. Good, really good time to do that. Um, the cattle, the broiler, the turkey and eggs, their prices are forecasted to increase across the board. Just more increases coming. And then for milk and cheese specifically, we're expected to see higher import numbers with lower export numbers. So it's going to drive the price up whenever you're getting it from overseas and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that's all from the U.S. Uh, DA. They do a world agricultural supply and demand estimate, and they talk about you know what what we did for 2021, what 22 is kind of looking like, and so that gave us a pulse on kind of where we were before this event really took off. So how will this war with Russia affect us? 
one of the biggest ways it's going to affect us is with energy. And we all know what happened with the pipeline situations. Um, so hopefully we can just turn ours back on and kind of offset some of the things. But many of the European nations rely heavily upon Russia for energy. And mainly it's through gas, through vital pipelines. Also, they're huge natural gas suppliers, uh, Russia and the Ukraine are. So natural gas is used to heat a lot of buildings. And they've already seen prices just skyrocketing in 2021, which caused the UK fertilizer plants to shut down. So this has a, you know, a ripple yeah. effect, right? Because as soon as their power costs increased and made it so they couldn't make a profit off making their fertilizers in that kind of situation. When the price of fertilizer goes up, that goes directly to your farm, which goes directly to your table. And so all of this affects what our food prices look like, what inflation looks like. <clears throat> the one interesting thing that I found out was this led to carbon dioxide shortages. So they produce huh? carbon dioxide as byproducts, right, of making the fertilizers. And carbon dioxide is actually essential for everything from medical practices to keeping our food fresh as it travels. So how about that? Right? It's oh just like ripples across the whole system. It's like, remember when we used to play that game with the parachute and the ball? Right? Yeah. And if one person wasn't like doing their job, it was like, Voop, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Between our book of this the <laughs> Prairie, now parachute games. And, yeah. Oh, my goodness. We're going back We're to play our Duck, youth. Duck, Duck, Goose at the end of the show? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Musical chairs? Uh, that'd be kind of tough. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just taking it a little too far now, Chad. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's me. So for food prices overall, they're going to be affected by this event. We've already had crazy catastrophic weather throughout most of the mm. year affecting crops in all these different countries. The prices have already rose sharply in 2021. As you were saying before, Chin, Russia and Ukraine account for one fourth of the total global wheat export. Yeah. So, and if they're not producing, then the countries that, you know, produce on the side, they kind of got to step up. Well, we know what Brazil has been looking like. They've had flooding and droughting. Argentina's on fire. We're going to talk more about that, you know, as the news comes up. So um, countries like Turkey and Egypt that rely on the Ukraine and Russia for almost 70% of all of their wheat imports. They're going to see a big, drastic increase, and, and it's going to have they'll be, some... They'll be going to other sources, which will increase the demand and increase mm -hmm. the prices for everybody else. You got it. Ukraine also produces one half of the global sunflower oil exports. They're Who also... Yeah, they're also the number one supplier of corn to China. Um, and then Russia is the main supplier of all of the of some of the key ingredients to make any kind of fertilizer. So again, this is gonna just hit the bottom line because mm -hmm. um, even on the USDA, they're like, "Yeah, we've had some crazy weather, but we have really good growing techniques now, and we have really good <laughs> seeds and stuff." Right? Good chemicals. Yeah, we have good chemicals. So what you know, we can harvest larger yields on the stuff that does do well. And it's like, well, what if you don't have fertilizers to make that happen? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. or what if they cost a crumb load of money? Your gardens have to go in this year, people. They have to go in and they have to grow good. And I'm telling myself that as much as anybody because I've been really struggling to get things to grow really big here. So yeah. um, it, it needs to happen this year. It just ha absolutely has to happen. Yep. Um, transportation as far as uh, shipping and rail freight. So we're going to see another impact on our supply chain, which is already struggling right now because of the increase in oil prices and because of the potential for cyber attacks on those things. So that's going to be interesting. Metals 
Russia and Ukraine lead in the production of nickel, copper, and iron. These are all essential metals for so many of the things that we do, um, that we produce for the microchips and all that. Um, other raw materials like neon, palladium, and platinum also come out of Russia and the Ukraine. So prices are already increasing there. Palladium's used for like automotive exhausts, mobile phones, and um, dental fillings. And neon, they actually use neon for writing the microchips. For bar lights. But yeah, the the lights, but we have LED now. But they use it for um the lithography of um for writing microchips. Hmm. So we're like, we told Russia, we're like, oh, we're gonna cut you off from microchips. Russia's like, yeah, we're gonna cut you off from neon, you know? <laughs> like take that. Come on. <laughs> Russia also supplies the most amount of titanium in the world as well. Um, so that's essential for all the aerospace industries and stuff like that. Um, so Elon Musk, I'm sure, is up in arms. So basically on the horizon, we're looking at more inflation and slower growth due to all of this um, turmoil that's happening. There's definitely cereal grain concerns. The prices are already skyrocketing because of the weather, because of the labor shortages. So there's going to be a big impact on wheat and bread prices. Um, that's from the World Trade Organization themselves. And then it's going to be shifting markets as far as like where people are getting their product. But hopefully we're able to shift things around enough to make sure that, you know, we're feeding a world here um, as much as... What are you going to do to over, overcome that? It's like, who's got enough property to grow wheat? To step up. Yeah, um, yeah, France. France is stepping up into no, some I of mean, those markets. Like you, like, you can't grow that in your garden. You, no, I mean maybe you can make a muffin. No, by the you end have of the to season. have like a wheat farm now. Yeah, to get a good you harvest have to find to be like able alternative to... mm -hmm. uh, flower making. Yeah, products. And you know, I just did the article last week about how much they're cutting down the Amazon and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Well. That's where these things are happening. You know, they plant them over to grow food and stuff. So mm -hmm. we have to keep a balance at the same time as we're feeding the world, right? It gets really, really tricky to figure out what is that balance. But I'm quite sure it's not drinking roach milk. <laughs> That's been... Could be, though. Right? That's what everybody sounds, suggests. Like, oh, we need to eat bugs. Oh, come on. Oh. I'm going to buy you uh, some chocolate roach milk. Yeah. At least you're getting me chocolate. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get you chocolate roach milk for prepper camp. I'm going to be like, here. We'll, we'll have to have a t-shirt. Got roach milk? <laughs> <laughs> they have it in California. I could get some shipped out here. Oh, my goodness. Now, it hasn't hit any kind of Texas shelves from what I've seen, but I saw it mm -hmm. in California. Nasty roach milk. Yeah. Who in their right mind? I don't know. I mean, and why in, would you ever like name modern it modern day, why would you ever think about drinking that? And they're not milking roaches. They're, it's <laughs> actually like roaches. Like almond milk is not actually like a milk. It's just ground up almonds and water. Well, that's... Ew! <laughs> Ugh. Okay, anyway, let's not let's talk about my that. Oreos. Let's go. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> So if you guys, you know, you have more input on what, you know, how this is going to affect us, we have to just watch this kind of evolve, see what's going to happen with so many of the players. My biggest caution to everybody would be understand that everything today in our world is about smoke and mirrors and greed. So be careful of jumping onto any bandwagons that want you to just spew hatred forward you know try to try to walk in the light and see that bigger picture so that we can understand what's really going on right now what's what's really going on is when everything started with the with the virus and whatnot i was like hey everybody eyes on your freedom and that's one of the reasons why i'm not on facebook to this day because oh um, me either yeah you know because i i was thrown off there for my views but in the meantime, eyes on your freedom, you know, this could be the emergency declaration they need to go the step further. So yeah.
big picture. I just dropped an Easter egg into the uh, chat, the live chat room for anybody. Uh, oh, there you go. Wants to go back and check it out. Oh, don't say what it is. I'm not. I'm they not. Gotta, they gotta log in and check it out. <laughs> Keep it quiet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, nom, 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 nom. All right. On that note, we're out of here. If you want to check out more about me and Chin and our awesome show, head on over to changingearthseries.com. You'll find everything about the books, the audio drama, the podcast, social media links, everything you want and more is there. It's all ready for you. So go check it out, changingearthseries.com. And until next time, remember, dream, survive.